HP has recently released a new update to its IMC management solution. We're now at version 5.2, and in the new release, there's quite a few updates that are pretty cool. One of them that I'm really excited about is the modifications to BYOD support and the enhancements there. So what I'd like to do today is walk you through how that's working in the new new release of, of IMC, and then show you what that looks like in, in action. So here is the infrastructure that, that we're going to, to be testing this out on. Uh, we've got a, a guest device, in this case an iPad, that is looking to gain guest access to an established HP infrastructure. So we've got an HP access point, an HP MSM wireless controller, and HP IMC version 5.2 running with the user access manager module uh, installed and configured. That's the, the module that, that provides the BYOD support. And then we've got a Microsoft DHCP server in the environment with a IMC DHCP agent that sends device information the DHCP server sees during the DHCP uh, process over to the IMC server. So the access point is advertising uh, SSID, uh, SS underscore BYOD guest, and the iPad connects up to that network, and the access point sends along the uh, MAC authentication request over to the MSN controller, which then forwards it over to the IMC server. The IMC server looks in its database to see if it recognizes the MAC address, and if it doesn't, it directs the MSN controller to put that new device in VLAN 101, or in this case, that's the, the registration VLAN. The MSM con controller directs the AP to do that, and the AP then puts the guest device on, on VLAN 101. So at this point, the guest device is connected to the network on VLAN 101, but it doesn't have an IP address. So it sends out a DHCP request, which is forwarded on VLAN 101 over to the DHCP server. The DHCP server responds with an IP address valid for the 101 network but it replaces the network DNS server with the IP address of the IMC server. And this will be used to, to support the authentication slash authorization process. The DHCP server agent that, that's installed on that server then sends specific device information about the guest device over to the IMC server. So now the guest device tries to connect to the internet and, and that uh, internet request because of the, the DNS server um, information is redirected to a website running on the IMC server. This is the registration site. So depending on the rules that are set up by the administrator, either a new guest could re uh, register themselves for guest access or you know, have a ID and password provided to them. But after a successful uh, registration process, the IMC server sends a message down to the MSN controller telling it to dissociate that device from the registration VLAN and reassociate it to the VLAN that's appropriate for, for that indiv individual device. In this case, that would be VLAN 102. So at that point, the access point moves the, the guest device. I mean, it gets disassociated and then it gets reassociated with VLAN 102. Now it's connected back to the network but it doesn't have a valid IP address for VLAN 102. So it sends a DHCP request on VLAN 102. Uh, the DHCP server gets that and responds with a valid IP address for VLAN 102 and then also with the, the network DNS server. So at this point, the guest device and, and the authentication process is complete. The guest device is on the network, has an IP address on a, on a subnet that is corresponding to the specific device type, and now it's able to access the internet. So what I'd like to do now is actually show you what that looks like in action. So we're going to start out on the guest iPad, and we're going to head over to the Wi-Fi settings, and we see that the SS underscore BYOD underscore guest network is being advertised by the access point. So we're going to connect up to, to that network and, and while we're tr making this connection, the access point is sending the MAC authentication request over to the IMC server. IMC server is responding back 
uh, telling the MSN controller and the access point to put this device on the 101 network, which is the registration network. Now what you notice here is the DNS server that's listed here, the 249.4 address, is not the DNS server on the network. It's actually the IP address of the IMC server. Uh, and this will be used to redirect the initial uh, DNS request to the IMC server to put up the um, registration slash author authorization page that we'll use. So now let's head over to IMC and see what's going on there. So inside IMC, the BYOD functionality is underneath the user access manager module. So if we head into that module and take a look at the devices it's aware of, we do see that it is aware of the Apple iOS device being connected to the, to the network. It got this information from the DHCP agent that we installed on the Microsoft DHCP server. What you'll notice here under the account name is that the account name associated with that device is BYOD Anonymous. This is an internal uh, ID inside of IMC and it's used specifically for devices that have connected to the network but haven't yet completed the registration process. So now what we'll do is we'll head back to the iPad and continue on with the registration process. So let's head back to the guest iPad and open up an internet browser and attempt to connect to a site on the internet. And what's happening behind the scenes is the DNS request is being sent to the IMC server and subsequently the uh, web request is being redirected to a website, a registration website on the IMC server. So we've got two choices here depending on how you want to set up your policy. You can either force people to um, configure and have a username and password um, defined by administrator or you can give the people the ability to register for a guest account. In this case we're going to elect to register for a guest account uh, and hopefully I can type my password here uh, the same twice and, and if I can when I hit register uh, I will get a message that comes back and lets me know that I've been successfully registered to the guest network and provide me a little bit of information around um, the specifics of that registration. Now what's happening behind the scenes is the IMC server has directed the MSM controller and ultimately the access point to disassociate us from VLAN 101 or that registration VLAN and reassociate us with VLAN 102. So if we go back and take a look at the wireless settings now, we'll see we're still connected to the BYOD underscore guest network, but what's happened behind the scenes is the IMC server has directed the MSM controller and ultimately the AP to disassociate this device from VLAN 101 and reassociate it with VLAN 102, which is a non uh, registration VLAN. So now the device has gone through the DHCP process and obtained an IP address that's valid on the 102 network. And the other interesting thing here is that the DNS server is no longer the 249.4 address, which is the IMC server. Now the DNS server is the actual DNS server that's on the network. So now let's head back into IMC again and see what it's seen at this point. So inside the user access manager module, uh, we can hit query to refresh the, the screen and we'll see that that um, Apple iOS device that had the account name of BYOD Anonymous now has been updated to have the account information that we've registered with. So now IMC sees that device um, and the uh, corresponding account name that's associated with it. So if we head back over to our guest iPad and open up the internet browser, attempt to connect to a site, we see now that we're able to connect to sites on the internet. So this concludes the BYOD authentication process using Mac authentication and IMC 5.2. Um, it also concludes this demonstration of this and, and I hope you guys uh, found this informative and I hope you guys are as excited about this as I am. Thanks for listening and have a great day.